Hello there everyone, it's time for another adventure into UXW Bell's Vintage Electronics Collection. What do I have for you today? A Sony table radio, specifically a model number ICF9580W. This was something that I picked up a few months ago at the area public radio and television stations benefit sale. Now it's far from uncommon to see things like recorded music in every format imaginable and stereo components there. However, I have never seen a table radio offered for sale there. When I saw this one sitting on the shelf marked $10 and claimed to be in perfect working condition, I snapped it up as I have wanted one of these Sony radios for a very long time. You see, there was a time in Sony Corporation's history when the person buying a product from Sony could be safe in the knowledge that it would be well engineered, well made, good value for money, and it would last a long time. This radio is an excellent performer, and Sony sold many variations on it over the years. In fact, you can see another variation over here on the computer. You can see a yet another variation over there. And still another variation, that one in a black case and with an elongated style similar to this one. But Sony eventually got out of the table radio business probably sometime between 2004 and 2008. It's really not clear to me, so if you're looking for a table radio these days, you'll simply have to turn to other sources. Personally, although I don't think Sony enjoys the reputation for high quality, reliable products that they used to, I still think that there are a great many products that Sony designs, manufactures, and sells that are certainly worthy of your dollar. But we didn't come here to talk about that today. Instead, let's get back to the subject at hand. This is a very classy AM-FM monophonic table radio. It gives some hints that there is serious audio quality lurking inside, as it says bass reflex system. As it turns out, this is actually a ported enclosure. This is a solid veneer body. And you have a very simple control layout. You have an analog tuning dial here for both AM and FM. Now, I personally think that this probably should have a dial light in it. There's even some suggestion up there with that serrated plastic piece that it would. But I've not found any evidence of wiring going to the front panel for the purpose of a dial light, and I suppose that if there ever was one, it burned out a long time ago. If there isn't one, and if it can be done, I will probably add one in the form of a nice white LED. The other controls are pretty simple. You have tuning up top, you have volume in the center, and another mark of the audio quality that lies within. You have bass and treble controls, although you really can't read them in this lighting. And then there is the FM and AM tuning band switch and the power button. I don't think we can ex expect any miracles in reception here in the basement, but I'll go ahead and turn it on and see if anything happens to come in. You do hear a little bit of soft transformer hum when this thing is running, but considering the size of the transformer that's in it, that's really not too bad. We'll take a look at the innards later. Let's give it a listen. That's surprisingly good performance for FM, considering that I'm only using the antenna that is actually built into the power cord. Let's go ahead and flip it over to AM and see what happens. I'm not too optimistic, because I have a fluorescent light above me, I'm in a brick-walled basement, and I've got a computer sitting over here that's probably making plenty of noise on the AM broadcast band. But I'll go ahead and flip it over and see what we can find. Well, that wasn't very productive, was it? Not that I expected anything different, really. I mean, the AM reception down here is just not going to be very good under the circumstances, and I don't have any kind of an AM antenna hooked up to this thing. 
The only thing it's got at its disposal for an antenna is the internal ferrite rod with a bunch of wire wrapped around it as they typically are. Speaking of things like that, let's go inside this thing and have a look. You can definitely see that there is some serious quality going on inside this thing. This radio is pretty easy to take apart. You can see there's a little bit of a boo-boo, a bit of damage to the uh, veneer and press board cabinet. But all you do to get it apart is you remove six screws total. And then, this is where things get a little bit interesting. Instead of actually pulling the chassis out of the back of the cabinet or having the back wall of the cabinet come off, the chassis for this radio actually comes out from the front, as you can see. And when we get inside, there are definitely a couple of very interesting things to look at. The radio is actually fused, along with a warning to replace the fuse with only one of the same type. There's a set of filter capacitors in there, as you'd expect. As far as I know, apart from having its controls cleaned with something at the uh, public radio and TV benefit sale, this set has probably never been serviced. Now, there's no connection for headphone listening or anything like that. However, if we look over here at the audio power amplifier section on the back of this heat sink, not only does it appear that there's a push-pull audio section, the enclosure is ported, but it also appears that there is provision for thermal adjustment of the amplifier's bias as it warms up. There is a temperature sensitive device underneath that glob of glue that would adjust the amplifier's biasing as it warms up, especially during conditions of peak power demand. The Sony speaker is pretty darn hefty. I'd say that's probably about a three and a half, four inch speaker, just by a guess. The magnet is huge. I believe it's a two-way speaker. It's rated for eight ohms impedance and a maximum of 10 watts power input, which again suggests that they were not cheapskating on this radio. And then you can see the transformer over here, which is a very solid looking piece of equipment, although it's not quite as, uh, not quite as big as I remember it being. I was incorrect about the FM antenna. The FM antenna is actually this length of wire that runs along the cabinet of the radio here. It does not connect to the power cord in any way, shape, or form. And then back here you can see the ferrite bar that consists of the AM antenna. Getting into the controls looks to be a little bit on the entertaining side. Now back in the cabinet, there's a little bit of something interesting in there too. If you look inside the cabinet here, you can see that there's a little pillow of some kind. I'm not sure what this has in it. It almost looks like fiberglass in insulation of some kind. And that's resting in the back of the cabinet. Its purpose is quite simple. By absorbing some of the sound waves from the speaker and causing a little bit of a reduction in efficiency, it makes the speaker cabinet for the radio seem to be larger than it really is. When you go to put this radio back together, if you're fortunate enough to have one, be very careful that you don't lose these little trim rings that surround the front panel. These are actually made of some kind of a soft formed plastic, and if they're played with, they do like to fall off. So make sure before you put your radio together that you don't lose them, as it appears they provide not only something for appearance's sake, but also a means of helping to seal the cabinet and keeping the acoustic signature of the enclosure intact. Everything is back together now, and in the name of one more demonstration, I've gone ahead and hooked up an extremely dodgy FM antenna. Yes, that is definitely the word for it. It's just a piece of speaker wire hooked up to one of this thing's twin lead terminals on the back. And it does lead outdoors, though it just ends up going through a cutout in the window and falling on the ground outside. So, yeah, like I said, the word is definitely dodgy. Let's see if it brings, uh, allows us to bring in any more stations on this set. Go ahead and adjust the volume there and just start tuning through the band. It was prior to the landmark 1987 Florida law. There was no. No, if you fall, pick yourself up off the floor. And when your bones can't. Secondarily, it's 
the color. One direction, one thing. Don't stop, don't stop. Powerful new series since Thursday. Don't miss the music movie event of the summer. What do you want to be when you go? And I was almost first. Then all the love is lost. We found. I'll make it. Hey, all it's Dirk Smedley. It's Dirk Smedley outdoors in the corn crib set. Now someone asked me if this radio might be for sale in one of my previous videos where it was visible on the shelving unit that I had assembled in my bedroom. No, this radio is not for sale. This thing is definitely a keeper. Thank you for watching and feel free to leave a comment if you have one.